I'll just say a quick prayer before we start. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Father, thank you for this day that you have given and for life and we're looking forward to learning more about our bodies and how to look after them and cooperate with you. We ask for the infilling of your, your Holy Spirit, Spirit into our hearts and yeah, thank you for what we're about to learn. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. No, you're right. <laughs> so we're going to be learning about the immune system. And yeah, you're right. Um, it's really important to know the house that we are living in and how to keep it clean, how to, yeah, it's actually the most important thing to learn about how our bodies work and how to look after it, yet um, it's actually the most neglected as well. Um, but yeah, when you think of the immune system, what, what kinds of words or pictures or things come to your mind? What was that? Lymph, lymph yep. Lymph nodes and things, yep. Something like that. <laughs> there was one one um, young man said one of the previous programs. He thinks of sugar. Every, when he thinks of immune system, <laughs> negative effect. <laughs> sugar. <laughs> yeah. Fighting disease. Yes. Emotion. Emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love to find how to heal my immune system. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, the immune system has a big part to play and it's, yeah. yeah, there's lots of, yeah, it's a really amazing system. So these are some of the lines of defence and ways that our immune system operates. So it operates through our lymph nodes, um, which are held... There's some places are just um, below our chin, our armpits, groin area as well. In the lymph nodes are the cells or the lymphocytes of the immune system. They actually recognise and eliminate evading, invading pathogens. Um, yeah, and then you have your white blood, blood cells um, and they actually attack pathogens. We're going to learn all about this, but we're, they're going to attack the pathogens in the blood itself and in other tissues of the body. So that's white blood cells. And in the respiratory system, we have hair-like, oh, here we go, hair-like projections that actually line our airway and they're constantly moving upward, like in a wave upward. So if we breathe in um, any invading any pathogen or bacteria, these will, um, it gets trapped in those hair-like follicles and is moved out and up. And we actually either cough it out or breathe it out. Amazing. We also have mucus that lines our airways as well. So all these are designed to trap um, any nasty things that come in. Uh, we also have our skin. Our skin, we want to make sure we don't break. And um, if we do, they're, they're, yeah, we can run through some, sink, some things we can do when we do break our skin as well. It's an effective barrier against invading pathogens too. And if anything does get in through what we either eat or what we breathe in, what's in our stomach that kills off? Yes, yes, stomach acid. It kills most harmful bacteria. Antibodies also are secreted by the intestinal cells. And yeah, these attack viruses and other pathogens that have landed in the intestinal tract. So it's amazing. We are, yeah. Yeah, and we want to learn how to keep these things in perfect, like in running order. Yeah, so any questions about that one? 
Oh, sorry. The spleen. <laughs> Thank you. Assists the body in protecting itself against bacterial infections. That's not very um, detailed, but um, yeah. But yeah, so it's, there's lots of different, lots of lines there. Um, so we'll look at the enemy first. So there's a number of different things that are harmful around us. So we have bacteria. We're always exposed to bacteria. <laughs> we can't really escape it. Um, viruses. Yeast infections, staph, which actually is always on our, present on our bodies, um, but it's just the right environment for it to flare up. So we do have staph, um, E. coli, which is um, a stomach issue, which is always actually in our stomach as well, but same thing, if it has the right conditions, it'll flare up as well. Fungus, fungus parasites and cancer as well. And these are some of the things, this is what some of them actually look like. They look nasty, if you ask me. <laughs> um, but our immune army, as we were just learning about before, in some of the different organs, our immune army on the cellular level, we have white blood cells, macrophages, helper T cells, B cells, B cells and killer T cells. I'm just going to read to you slowly and, yeah, I guess try your best to understand it, but it's just amazing. When I, when I learned this, I was like, wow, just really what happens when, yeah, something, yeah, pathogen gets in, what actually our cells do. So phagocytes are white blood cells whose primary job is to destroy bacteria by engulfing it. So it actually opens up and engulfs the bacteria and then eats them. And then neutrophils are one of the most, oh sorry, one type of phagocyte and is the most abundant white blood cell in our bodies. Although they are small, they are our first line of defense against bacterial infections. Like good army troops, neutrophils are the first to rush to the site of infection. Highly mobile, they can leave the blood to track down, surround and destroy the enemy. So we want we want these cells running in beautiful order so things can just be um, zapped quickly. <laughs> these tiny organelles, tiny cells contain scores of molecules, free radicals and compounds that destroy the protein, carbohydrates, fat. Um, yeah. So neutrophils, that's the most common type of blood bl white blood cell. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. Just engulfs it, destroys it, and that's the end of it. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. A certain so these are actually in our bloodstream. Oh. So white blood cells um, is contained like alongside our blood. Oh. So, but yeah, we'll have a look. The ratio of blood cells to like your red blood cells to white blood cells. Um, I can't remember what the ratio is. I'll have to. Here we go. For um, hang on, white blood cells. So there's one white blood cell for every ten thousand red blood cells. Wow. So there's not as many of them, but um, there, there's enough, <laughs> enough to get rid of. Yeah, and as you can see, our bodies are designed to heal themselves. And it's, yeah, it's just beautiful. Um, just off the top of your head, how can we give our bodies the right condition to, um, yeah, to assist in, in the healing process? I know there's things that really suppress and make, the, make it really hard, like smoking, um, sugar is a big one. Yeah, we'll learn about that as well. Or another question, how can we boost our white blood cells? That's probably another one. What kinds of things do you guys think we could do to boost and increase the efficiency of our white blood cells? Water, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Your blood pressure is very high. Yeah. You are hungry and mm. mm -hmm. but I never take the uh, medicine. Yes. I just do exercise. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Stuff. Amazing. Mm. And now I get better. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. hundred percent yet because I still, you know. Yeah, it's mm. it's amazing. Simple. Simple remedies, it's just beautiful. Yeah, we'll be we'll be learning about that. Yeah. And I'm not gonna go too much into into it, but when we do get a cold or the flu, yeah. you know how we have a fever or we feel yeah. hot? Fevers are actually a good thing. It actually that um, for centuries actually has been used to boost our white blood cell count. Because a fever, it actually raises our body temperature above 40 degrees. And that's the point where white blood, white blood cells are called to action and actually um, yeah, flock to that area that's needing or wherever that invading pathogen actually is. Um, we can actually induce a fever even when we're not sick. Um, we can actually induce a fever by um, hydrotherapy. We'll learn about that as well. Um, yeah, I, I was just reading that white blood cells can triple um, and the met metabolic rate and healing increases by 4,000 like, percent. So it's just, it's just amazing <laughs> how, yeah, the response. Um, and applying, like with the heat, like when our body's raised, that blood is actually pulled to that area as well. And... What's contained in our blood? What does our blood contain? It contains oxygen, nutrients. It actually carries away waste. Um, and yeah. And yeah, it also contains water as well. It's the best cleanser. Now, I found this quote. You've heard of the book Ministry of Healing? Yeah, it's a great book. I would. Yeah. Yes. Exciting. Oh, yeah, it's a really good book. I would, yeah, really encourage you all to read it. Um, so this is a little little paragraph out of there. And it says, pure air. We have some pure air here. <laughs> Sunlight, abstemiousness, which is um, temperance. Yeah, abstaining from, yeah, that which is not good. <laughs> rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, internally, externally, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. So it's very simple, but um, yeah, I just wanted to highlight this. It's, yeah, even though we might know it already, but it's yeah, a really powerful little paragraph that we can actually, yeah, we can incorporate these things each day it's a privilege so we'll just run through some things on how we can actually yeah how we can boost our immune systems and yeah have our bodies in a healthy healthy condition and state so there's an article um, that was written it says go for the plant Again, a little quote from Ministry of Healing. It says, the grains with fruits, nuts and vegetables contain all the nutritive properties necessary to make good blood. And when we have good blood, we have a good circulation and um, healing as well, wherever, yeah, wherever it goes. It's just amazing. Um, so for immune health, the best advice is to eat a well-balanced diet that is high in fibre, low in fat and rich in whole grains, fruits and nuts and vegetables. So, yeah, um, it's seen today that that's the best thing, the best, yeah, diet to have. Um, not, much, not so much a diet, but a lifestyle that we've chosen, yeah. Yeah, and you'll get... A bit of a, you know, you'll get an experience of what kind of food you can make while being here and just some ideas because it can be a bit tricky sometimes to know. Um, eat, less. eat less. Yeah, so this is interesting. Natural killer cells, which is some of the cells we're learning about, increase in number and ability to fight cancer cells if 
This was a study on mice. Animals in experimental studies are restricted in their food to approximately 60%. So they weren't allowed to gorge themselves. <laughs> Food restricted mice have strong anti cancer immunity, and as a result, cancer growth is suppressed and survival time prolonged in these mice. Amazing! So, I guess in, our, in ourselves, we can also restrict how much food we have. Um, yeah, by not, not overeating. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's amazing. Um, yeah, and, and learning like when. You feel, yeah, when you feel sufficed. <laughs> um, another one, we talked about sugar. Refined sugar. It's a poison, actually. Uh, refined sugar has the ability to suppress our immune system for up to six hours after we take it. It's not good. Um, it tastes good, I guess, but it's not good at all. Yep. It's just your white, yeah. your white sugar that's so been that's raw, sugar, okay. raw sugar. No, so oh, raw. That's called a refined sugar. Well, refined. Oh. It is refined. Yeah. yeah. I know Rapidura. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of that. It's a more, <clears throat> but less refined. less refined. But it's still. But there are other natural sources of sugar that we can, like yeah, that we can oh. use. Honey. Oh. And still in, you know, so no sensible amounts. No sugars that are related to sugar that through supermarkets and that sell mm. are any good. Um, yeah, they so they... They in your system for up to six hours. Is that what refined sugar... What was that, sorry? The refined sugar mm -hmm. that suppresses. So the word suppress, mm -hmm. it lowers mm. the, ef the ef efficiency of these cells <laughs> to a you know attack so yeah it just puts down all the barriers that you have to but that sugar comes from a green grass and when it's pressed <coughs> down it comes out as molasses that's pretty good for you mm, yeah molasses is a different thing you're right it's not good for you. so yeah. molasses is good but it comes from the sugar it, yeah it's just sugar okay. isn't it a again uh, something that I, that yeah, it, ha it hasn't gone through that yeah, big roof. Yeah. Oh. That is an empty yeah, it's, a, it's amazing and something that something that you can yeah go and have a look into as well. Um, I'll just quickly read. High blood sugar is also associated with the, the inability of immune cells to properly tag. So that's the thing. It inhibits these cells to properly tag the pathogens. And yeah, so they, they actually can't be eaten and destroyed. It's yeah, not very good. Um, Can you yeah. explain that, the sugar tags? Yeah, so it just, it just simply, it, um, yeah, sugar just reduces the ability of these cells, like we were talking about, the neutrophils, the white blood cells. The white blood cells. Yeah, the white they, cells. yeah, to work. So they can't actually properly find the pathogens and destroy them. One white um, cell healthy can kill 14 pathogens, but after sugar it can only kill one. Wow. Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one. Effects, on, effects of exercise on immunity. And we're all getting some exercise here. Exercise physiologists have found that moderate exercise increases the number of white blood cells. There you go, that's what we want. T cell activity is increased. And on the negative side, research does show that strenuous exercise may inhibit immune function. So we don't wanna, yeah, go over overboard with, um, I think you know what I mean, just, yeah. But immediate moderate exercise such as walking after a trauma such as surgery is often encouraged. I know my dad, he broke his leg um, like two days or even the day after he was the, um, what do you call them? The, os no. the exercise people. <laughs> they got him out of bed and got him walking down the corridor and we're all like, oh, mm, he's just, but yeah, exercise is what is needed. Um, yeah, sunlight increases lymphocyte numbers. 
one as well. It also stimulates B and T cell functions and stimulates the phagocytic cells as well. So that's those ones that eat and destroy. It's a good thing. Water, it flushes toxins out of our bodies and keeps blood and lymph flowing freely. So yeah, sometimes blood, uh, yeah, I've heard that blood can be quite thick and sticky, but when we are properly hydrated, it's actually, yeah, um, yeah, not thick, which is a good thing. Caffeine. This is something that we really want to abstain from and not touch. So it reduces the ability of the T lymphocytes to fight viruses. It also reduces melatonin production, which is an immune enhancer. Um, yeah, yeah. So caffeine's contained in coffee. Yeah. In, yeah, yeah, so, pardon? Well, because caffeine is in tea as well, it has the same, the same effect, yeah. Um, yeah, and I was just doing some reading, it was interesting, because um, when we do take caffeine, it stimulates our central nervous system um, and also stimulates our heart and our muscles. Um, it also increases our blood pressure as well. Um, yeah, so some people, oh, it can seem like a good effect. Oh, I feel alert, and but actually, it's not doing. It's not doing good. Yeah, um, it's actually quite a big, big deception um, in just mixed what actually is happening in our bodies, and it doesn't nourish our system. Um, yeah, and what seems, yeah, what seems to be strength actually is, um, yeah, yes, like a nervous excitement. Um, and equally, when the nervous, when the excitement's over, it actually causes, you feel weak and um, loss of strength. There's a lot of, yeah, 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 so it's a very real thing. Um, yeah, and it promotes, I mean, it put, makes you feel restless and increases our heart rate. So there's, there's a number of things to steer clear from. Um, but yeah, we can, we can talk about, about that um, a bit later anyway. Um, so that's caffeine. Temperance. So we want to abstain from alcohol, tobacco, caffeine. We just talked about drugs. Um, yeah, complete do away with we don't want anything to yeah hinder our body's ability to well one you know having a healthy body it's yeah a great privilege and um yeah how we can be useful as well in this life and um yeah good oxygen i'll just quickly mention <laughs> when you do get outside or even now but when you do have that fresh air to learn how to take deep breaths it's actually a habit that we can form to learn how to take deep breaths using our diaphragm not just doing little shallow breaths but proper yeah our stomach actually going out um, but yeah I think Joy will run through some um, different exercises we can do with that one and also it's important I was also doing a bit of reading a couple of weeks ago on how to maintain good posture. I just, it's a big one for me too. I'm learning, even when we're standing, you know, shoulders back and head up and it actually has a positive effect on our, men on our mental function as well. Um, it's amazing. Wear clothing that allows lung expansion, nothing too constricting. Spend much time outside when you get opportunity. Um, have fresh air in the room you occupy. And yeah, because every um, cell needs oxygen. So I'll just quickly run through. Um, some, yeah, time is actually out. Um, but yeah, if you want to take a photo, these are some things that um, we can do to, when we do have 
a sickness, a cold coming on, these are some things that we can do. Um, fast for a meal or two, eat simple and light, fruit, uh, light food like fruits, vegetables, whole grains. Stay away from concentrated sweets, oil and animal products. So yeah, try and do our best to stay, steer clear of them. Drink extra water with lemon in it. Take charcoal. I'm going very quickly through these, I'm sorry, but there's, yeah, there's a really, I'd love to talk more about this. <laughs> um, hydrotherapy, that, this is something that really helps um, with producing that, uh, getting our body to a, um, above 40 degrees so that it pulls blood and white blood cells to that area and fights off infection and yeah, it's a really great thing. We take herbs to, to boost our immune system, get out in the sun and get extra rest. So How often should we have charcoal? Do you think? Charcoal? Well, it's not something you would use daily, but when you have, there's lots of, <laughs> there's lots of instances you can use it. Um, but in the case of, yeah, in the case of your immune system, especially if, you ha if you've had some stomach-like issues, take charcoal, um, it'll settle and settle it and um, take away, actually draw the toxins and um, out of there as well. Um, but there's, yeah, there's lots of ways we can use charcoal. Um, how much? Um, we can talk about that, but ta a teaspoon in like half a cup of, of water um, but make sure you drink the equal amount of just pure water after that, just so you're evening it out. Um, so a, a cold, flu, don't stress when you do get a cold or a flu. It's a house clean. It's our body's way of, one of, like one of the ways of, that our immune system, oh, sorry, yeah, of cleaning out. Um, yeah, toxins, waste, whatever is, yeah, whatever's gotten in. And it's actually a time, a point when our immune system is the highest, believe it or not. White blood cell count has almost tripled as well. It's just amazing. Uh, yeah. Um, I just want to finish um, again. That's that same little quote. But I just want to finish with this. Um, larger quote at the top here again from Ministry of Healing and it's just great because it, it really um, just shows the steps of what to do when we do get sick or great to learn so when we meet anybody we can just share with them some things that they can do as well um, and it says disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health in case of sickness, it could be anything, the cause should be ascertained. So the cause should be found out. What, what happened? How did, how did this happen? Unhealthful conditions should be changed. So there's action that needs to be taken as well. Wrong habits corrected. And then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to re-establish right conditions in the system. Um, yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions on that little quote? <laughs> it's, it's a great quote. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, so there's, yeah, there's a bit of research to do when we get sick and even when we have pet members in our family that are sick um, and to find out what can we do to assist um, to expel the impurities and re-establish right conditions. Yeah. Yes, we just looked at some things that we can do and um, yeah, I hope that this has given you some more tools and yeah, sorry I had to go a bit quicker at the end there, but yeah, we're ready for our next meal. <laughs> yeah, thank you for listening and yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, do we, yeah, I'll just close with prayer and also, um, say grace as well. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for what we could learn about and the beautiful things that um, 
yeah, the remedies that you have given and yeah, we ask for help to yeah, put these things daily into practice and yeah, we are so thankful for um, yeah, the ability to be able to learn and apply. I just ask for your blessing over the food that we're about to eat and thank you for providing for us and pray this all and thank this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.